Father, please be with me. I do not know where I am, but I know that you're always watching over me. Please remove me from this, from this place. Please be with my mother and my father and the authorities and please help them find me. Please, please find me. Good luck, Nick. See you later. See ya. Don't be a stranger. Hey, man, take care. Police are continuing their search for Rhonda Moore, who was last seen leaving Woodward Community College. Yeah, I gotta call you back. Her vehicle was found abandoned south of County Road 154 and East West 42 with her phone and... There you go, Nick. What are you going to do with all that money? Uh, I haven't thought about it yet. What are you going to do with 100% ownership? A lot more than I could ever do with 40, that's for sure. I wish you the best. It hasn't always been fun working with you, Nick, but I've learned a lot from you. Thanks. Wait, before you go, there's something me and the guys just got to know. Okay, what is it? Well, for the last three weeks, you're nice to everybody. I haven't heard you use the Lord's name in vain once. You don't go have drink beers with us anymore? Well, Ryan, I'm still the same guy. I just don't live for me anymore. Please, sir. Oh, please don't. You don't need to do this. It, maybe I heard him wrong. He needs he, to keep his big fat he, mouth shut. He, he, I know that, but Mr. Farrell, please, please don't do nothing bad. You don't need to. He, he, he didn't. He didn't mean it. He's not worth it. He's a little guy, I'm anyways. I'm not gonna He's hurt not, him, but I'm gonna teach him a lesson. Mr. Farrell, there, there's a stop sign coming up here. Oh my gosh. You're gonna teach him a lesson. You're gonna go too far, Nick. It's not worth going back to jail over. I've been there before. <sighs> Please don't. Just stay out of it and let me handle it. Please don't do this. No, he didn't. He needs to learn to be more respectful. No. There he is. Oh, no, don't do this, please. Please don't. Sure. What's the big idea of telling people if you don't believe in God, you're a coward? Huh? Why don't you explain that to me? That's not what I said. What I, I said, what I said. Nikki, before we say our prayers, I want to read something to you, okay? It's out of the Bible, and it's John 3, 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. How'd they kill Jesus, Mommy? Sorry, I shouldn't have done this. What I said was, if any man knows how Christ suffered, was tortured and nailed to a cross, and that man has the nerve to mock the life of Christ, he is a coward.
I'm not worth your time. Anybody is worth my time. Hey, Mama. He wanted you to have this when the time was right. Come on in, it's open. Taylor. Nick. How you doing? I didn't recognize you there. It's been a while. How are you doing? Hi. Hey, sorry I had the door shut. I'm working on a story and... Uh, the gal up front ran to the post office. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. So what brings you by today? This right here. Okay. New lies for old. And there's a phone number here, but no address. That's my cell phone. Your cell phone? Mm-hmm. New lives for old. What's this all about, Nick? <clears throat> about six weeks ago, I gave my life to Christ. And I want to uh, share the story and, and, and the change, and, and maybe someone else can... Maybe someone else can benefit. So are you thinking about doing some ministry work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, give me a day or two to put something together and... We'll sure get you going. Yeah. You know what would be nice? Yeah. If you put a little cross right there, maybe, you know, or a cross and then the shadow of the, on the ground, you know. Little, uh, something That's like a good that. idea, Nick. I mean, that way we could have a visual element and about the true in, intents and purposes rather than just text. Right. So if you want to check up front, I'd be glad to pay. I mean. Oh, Nick, you know. I want you to run it every day. Are you sure about that? Sure. If, if you want me to... Pay a couple of months in advance, I'd be glad to. No, no, you, you've always been good to us. You paid on time, and you've been good to us. Hopefully, we've been good to you. I'm not worried about that at all. Okay. Um, but, yeah, give me a day or two to put together, and we'll get it going, and hopefully we can help you out. Okay. Good luck, sir. Thanks a lot, Taylor. <laughs> but Stay out of trouble. I'm going to try. Unbelievable. Shut the hell up. This is between me and my Don't boy. Just get your finger out of her face. Get out of here, you monster, you thug. Leave and never come back again.
I know I shouldn't be here. Just let me say this. Just let me get this out, okay? I just come to tell you how sorry I am for knocking you out. Being pushed by a son does not justify being knocked out. You know, I've done a lot of bad things in my life that I'm ashamed of. Been hitting you with the worst. I just want you to know how sorry I am. I'm gonna tell you something, Wayne, that I've never told you. I've never said, I love you, Wayne. I love you more than you can imagine. And I'm, and I'm so sorry. And maybe someday you can find it in your heart to forgive me. And I, this, this is what I want to say. I, I'm sorry. Dad, wait, Dad, don't go. You don't have to wait till Sunday. I forgive you. I forgive you. I love you, son. I love you, Dad. I love you. I missed you, Grandpa. I missed you, baby. Nick Farrell, what are you doing here? Hey, Ronnie, I just come by to talk to you. What in the world would we ever have to talk about? Well, I uh, came to apologize for the fight we had a few months ago, the skirmish. What did you come to apologize for? Did you come to apologize for putting me in the hospital for a month? Did you come to apologize for me missing out on a month's wages? Did you come to apologize and pay for my medical bills? You know what? You're still under a restraining order. I could have you arrested right now. Actually, I didn't just come to apologize. I know you missed some work. And I came to try to see if I could help out. Oh yeah, I've heard all about the new Nikki Farrell. So you had a come to Jesus meeting. And now you want the whole town to know about it. But you know what? I'm not buying it. You're still the same foul-mouthed, hard-fighting thug you've always been. With all due respect, Ronnie, you started it. In fact, you didn't throw the first punch, you threw the first two punches. Yeah, maybe I had a little too much to drink. Maybe I should have listened to the guys when they tried to pull me back. Maybe I should have listened to them when they told me about your past. But you know what? When a man says, please... When a man says, stop. When a man says, please stop. You don't keep pounding on him. I'm sorry. You can take your sorry, your money, your Bible, and your religion and get the hell out of here. Hey, Nick. That's five thousand dollars. We're even now. You understand me? something I've had coming for a while. I'll get you an ice pack. No, wait. Just sit here with me for a minute. (sighs) 
Nobody believes me. Or at least they don't want to believe me. Give them some time, honey. Things have a way of working themselves out. When people see the change in your life, they will believe that your heart is different. Really? Sometimes I think people make up their minds about others. And they want to believe the worst about other people. They won't believe anything good. Maybe I'm more guilty of that than anybody. That's what I love about you. What? You aren't afraid to list all the things that you believe are wrong in your life. Then you change them. Maybe I've just been a loser most of my life and I didn't realize it till lately. Honey, don't say that. You aren't a loser. Things have changed in a huge way for you. You need time to adjust as well. Besides, this Bible is full of scoundrels that lived as they pleased, then gave their lives to God, and things turned out much better for them. <clears throat> I'll get some ice now. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. Did you just refer to me as a scoundrel? Yes, but you are my scoundrel. I'm glad that you and Wayne made up, but is it true? Is, is what true? That somehow, for some reason, you found God. I gave my life to Jesus Christ, if that's what you're talking about. So, no more drinking, no more wild women, no more all night at the bar? And you're going to church, and obviously you're reading your Bible. So what's your point, Helen? People around town have said that you've lost your mind. Your elevator's not going all the way to the top anymore. I don't care what people think. I'm just doing what's on my heart. I need to tell them about what happened to me when Christ touched my life. So, what did happen? I was offended by what somebody had said and I found him carrying a cross down the highway. And I knocked the cross off his shoulders. And for the first time in my life, I saw it. But so many people think that this is temporary, that it's a, a fad you're going through, and that things are going to change and go back to the way they were. And again, I don't care what they think. Do you really think you can wipe everything away? I don't have the ability to wipe anything away, Helen. All I can do is live each day and do the best I can. I do not have time to look back on mistakes. See, what I've come to realize in this life, our scars are our mistakes, our regrets, the things we do wrong, the sins, his scars, the nails, the spear in the side and the thorns that pierced his brow. He'll carry those scars for the rest of eternity. Our scars will vanish when we see him. 58 years, not a tear. Now I can't stop. But are you happy, Nick? Yeah. Maybe for the first time in forever. Aren't you and Tony happy? I'm happy for you and Maria. I wish this would have been the man that I married all those years ago. Talk about regrets. So long, Nick. Hey.
I would be helpless within me without you. Holy Spirit, you are rivers of living water. I would be I'm sorry, sir, we didn't notice you. Nicole, will you please take care of this gentleman? Sure, Mom. Is that all you need? Oh my gosh. Hello? You'll never believe he's in front of my store. I really don't have a lot of time to play any guessing games, Mom. Nick Farrell. I warned him the other day about coming around to any of us. The restraining order is still in effect. What do you want me to do? Call the police right now. I want him arrested. Don't you think that's a little harsh? I just thought maybe you'd want me to chew him out a little bit. Hell no! I want him arrested! He needs to be arrested. He's breaking the restraining order. I want him in cuffs and I want him hauled off to jail. Calm down, honey. I'll call the police. And do me a favor, Val. Take pictures from inside the store of Farrell being arrested. And then send him to my phone. You got it, honey. <laughs> dealing with you again. You know you're not supposed to be here. You're violating the restraining order from that whooping you gave Mr. Mulhill a while back. You're going to jail. For what? For violation of a restraining order. Let's go. This isn't your first ride, Farrell. Get in there. Nicole, will you please take the deposit underneath the counter to the bank? Okay, Mom. And make sure you come right back. Mr. Farrell, it has been an extremely long day, and you are the very last person I want to see. Do you have any counsel? I'm not paying a lawyer for this. What do you have to say for yourself? I don't have anything to say. I was just going up and down the street handing out tracts. Tracts? Religious literature, Your Honor. Religious tracts, Mr. Farrell? I have looked through your file. You have two DUIs, 
You've been arrested many times for public drunkenness. You've been known to clear a few bars with your fighting. Four and a half years ago, there was a warrant issued for your arrest. And when the deputies tried to pick you up, you assaulted them. They spent a few days in the hospital, but you spent a few weeks in jail. And you were never arrested for it, but it has been alleged that you knocked out your own son during an argument. And now, you're handing out religious tracts? Look, Your Honor, I was in front of the store. And then, yes, I was handing out these tracts. But I wasn't aware of what store I was in front of. I was going up and down the street. Well, no matter what you're handing out, you're still in violation of the, the restraining order that the Mulho has got against you. So tell me about these tracks, Mr. Farrell. I'm just trying to reach people for Christ. Explain what happened to me can happen to them. And all that stuff in the file you got there, that's not me. That's not me anymore. Mr. Farrell, this is you. It's all on record. Yeah, it was me. I'll admit, it was me. 100% me. But not anymore. <sighs> to tell the truth, Mr. Farrell, I do believe that you may not have been aware of where you were standing, but ignorance is absolutely no excuse for not following the law. You were in violation of the restraining order. <sighs> in many ways, I have to say I admire you. I actually think it's kind of cute when people such as yourself find religion and think you can get some kind of innocence back after a life that you've led. Cute. There's nothing cute about me or my faith. Look, Mr. Farrell, I didn't mean anything bad by it. I'm a practicing Christian myself, and if I think you are... Practicing Christian? Why don't you quit practicing Christianity and get serious about it, and you just might change a couple of lives. What did you say to me? I didn't stutter. I said maybe I'll quit practicing... I heard you! That's 90 days, Mr. Farrell! 30 days for violating the restraining order and 60 days for contempt of my court. Get him out of here! I want you to make sure and put him in the same cell as Griggs and Martin. But your honor, there are only two beds per cell. I'm aware. I said what I said. Right here, you know the drill. Gentlemen. Have fun, girls. You're not gonna find any gentlemen in here. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing in here, old man? Can't you see there's only two cots in this cell? This is where I was assigned. Well, then you better get real acquainted with that floor. Yeah. That's fine. What are you doing in here? What's your charges? She said something about contempt of court. She? You talking Judge Lisa Hansen? Yeah. What'd you do to make her so mad? I said something about her spiritual life that uh, sort of offended her. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, old man? <laughs> it doesn't really matter right now. What she didn't realize is she's a modern day type of hanging judge. She'll help you get your mind right, boy. <laughs> All right, lights out. Father, bless me this night. Bless these two men that are with me. I pray that you can use me over the next few weeks. Hey. Lights are out. That means quiet. Be with my wife. Touch her. Comfort her where she is right now. Be with my son and my family. I guess Big Ledger's gonna have to teach you a lesson, old man. Help me guide me with these men in the next few weeks. That I would do only something that would glorify your name. You ain't been listening. In your holy name, amen. It'll be all right. What's your name, honey? Nicole. Where are we? 
I don't know, but I think I've been here about a week and a half. Will anybody find us? Somebody has to find us. Somebody will find us. We just have to keep on praying. I really need to go to the bathroom. That's all we have. Father, we plead for your mercy. Please help keep my beautiful sister Nicole safe. Please send someone to find us. Please. Hi. Hi, honey. How are you doing? As good as an inmate can be expected to be doing. I guess they're treating you well here. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm all right. And uh, are they giving you enough food to eat? Well, it's nothing like you're cooking, but I'll survive. I'm sorry to hear that. How's your garden, honey? Mm, I'm proud of how they've grown, even in this heat. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Have you made many friends here? <laughs> I don't know that I would call them friends. Let's just say I've made some acquaintances and some of them I've gotten to talk to about Jesus. Mm, are they willing to listen to you? Well, <laughs> I pretty much have a captive audience here. So they either listen to me or they walk away. In fact, tonight, I get to give the sermon in the break room. I'm sure you will do well, honey. I don't know how well I'll do, and I don't know a whole lot yet, but I'll do the best I can. Nick, I need to tell you. What is it, honey? Ron and Valerie's daughter is missing. No. Yeah, I don't know the details, but their daughter vanished on that evening when you were put in jail. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Even with the way they treated me, they didn't deserve that. I miss you, Nicholas. Hey, what about when I get out of here, we go away for a couple of days? First, you need to have your surgery on your hand done. Yeah, I know, honey. I've put it off long enough. Okay. After that, we'll go away for a couple of days. Okay? That would be fun. I love you, Maria. I love you, too. Dyson, step out. I need to talk to you. I have a job for you. I know with you in here, your family needs some money. What kind of job? Well, have you heard of Nick Farrell? Yeah, he's that guy that owns the tire shop here in town. Well, he's an inmate now, and he fancies himself some kind of preacher. And he needs to be taught a lesson. I'll give your wife $1,200 today. Then after you take Farrell out for me, I'll give her another $1,300 tomorrow. I'm already facing 15 years. I don't want to make it any worse. Don't worry, I'll vouch for you. Farrell started it. You just make sure that you finish it. How bad? Put him out of commission for good. I want him dead. He'll be preaching in the break room tonight, so you'll have your opportunity. What's your problem with this guy anyways? Well, before I joined the force, Nick and I butted heads. I was on the losing end. I've never forgotten about it. One last thing, Nick is very fast and very strong. So what? Do you guys mind if I shared some of God's word with you? You say so. I promise I won't take too long. Why don't you read John 3.16? We all forgot what it says. <laughs> Can you preach without opening the Bible? 
fine, I won't read to you. But I will quote two words straight out of the scriptures, if you'll allow me. You'll say two words out of the Bible, then you won't open it? You have my word. With this agreement, you have to promise to listen to me. Did you go to seminary school? Are you some sort of ex-preacher? No, I just joined the faith a few weeks ago. Oh really? Then I gotta hear this. Yeah, what can you learn in just a few weeks? Like I said, I'll just quote two words from scriptures and after that, I'll shoot from the hip. All right, we get it, Farrell. What two magical words do you <laughs> want to give to us? <laughs> <laughs> the two words are, Whosoever will. I've seen the verse, I've read the verse, and I can't even tell you where it is. But I can tell you this much. If a slime ball like me can be loved and accepted by Jesus Christ, then anybody can be. Hey, we made a deal, and you guys said you would listen to me. Whosoever will. We've heard that one before. Can't you do any better than that? Give us something we haven't heard before. Fine. How many of you would accept a pardon from the governor? <laughs> How many of you would accept a pardon from the president of the United States? <laughs> Tell me when it gets here so I can make sure my sail's nice and tidy. <laughs> Yeah, I want to get my hair cut and my nails done before the president gets <laughs> I get it. Then let me pose it to you like this. How many of you would turn down a pardon from the president of the United States? How many of you would seriously turn down any pardon from any politician or official? The truth is, none of you would. Not one person in this room would turn down any pardon that was freely given. Especially one that gives him a clean slate, a clear record. Then why do you turn down this pardon? This pardon being offered to whosoever will wasn't written in blue or black ink. It was written in dark red blood. And from that moment on, whosoever will still stands. I'll admit, I don't know a whole lot yet. But I know this. Every one of you could have a clean record. A clear slate. Maybe not in this world. But in the next one. How can you turn down a pardon from he who never sinned, who knew no sin, and accept a pardon from a politician whose life reeks of sin? This pardon is being offered to any who will accept it. Your record will be expunged. If you want this pardon, if you want this clean record, if you want this clear slate, if you want everything that you've ever done expunged, then come down here and pray with me. Maybe, maybe it's time I went for a clean slate. What? Are, are you serious? Everybody out, except for Dyson and Ferb. Now, move it, move it! said true? You prefer a guy like me that my record can be expunged? If you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, it will be done. It will be expunged.
please. Please, I beg you. We beg you. Release her, please. Listen to my wife, please. Let her come home. Really? Is this the best picture we can get? Sorry, Detective. Henderson's system is old and antiquated, but at least we have it trying to get something. Looks like whoever this is, he doesn't just grab her. For whatever reason, the girl approaches him. She is concerned for him. The girl believes this guy's hurt. Oh my God. I need you to get this out to the media as fast as you can. Here's your food. I'm not eating that slop. You better. That's all you get until tomorrow. You better let us out of here. I mean it. You'll be leaving here soon enough. Hey, Dad. Hey, Wayne. How you doing, son? I'm doing just fine. Question is, how are you doing? Oh, I'll be all right. This isn't my first trip. I can't believe you got thrown in here over what you told that judge. Well, it's my fault. I still tend to have a short fuse. And I guess she looked at that as a spiritual insult. Is there anything I can get you, Dad? Anything I can help you with? I can't think of anything. You know what? Sheet music. Sheet music? What yeah. What for? Well, I'll tell you later, before you leave, I'll give you the names of the songs I want, okay? Okay. I, that would really mean a lot to me if, if, if I had that. Sure, I can do that. Yeah. You know, we had Maria over for dinner last night. Well, I'm so proud of you for doing that. You know, she's all alone right now, so yeah. a couple of times a week, if you do that for me until I get out, I appreciate yeah. it. can't continue to look back on mistakes all right you just can't they're they're gone they're history your slate is clean okay and it doesn't matter what anybody out here says it doesn't matter what they say or what they think the only thing that matters is what your heavenly father thinks that's all True. that matters man that's all that matters Hold this for me. What the hell? Is this what you're gonna do? Ruin your life forever by taking another man's life? Hand him over, Nick. I mean it. Listen to me, Lester. You're not hurt and nothing bad happened. Get out of the way, old man, or something bad's gonna happen to you. You almost broke my jaw! Shut up. I'm going to give you a couple more seconds, Farrell, and I'm coming through you. You might make it through me, Lester, and you might not. I'm going to count to three, Nick. Please, listen to me. One. And what if you lose? Then you'll be damaged goods. You'll be a laughing stock. Especially losing to a guy my age. Two. Besides, you owe me, Lester. I'm asking you for this some grace and mercy this one time. 
What would your grandmother say? Hey, what's going on, you two? Nothing, sir. Nothing. It's nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. Nothing but a mild argument. Well, man, I don't think you can make it through. Hey, brother, don't sit there. Sit here beside me. I owe you my life. But on the other hand, I'm really pissed off that you got in between us. Lester, I did what I had to do to keep him from killing you and to keep you from killing him in turn. I would have bled out. Right there on the yard. In front of everybody. Maybe the Lord put me in here to keep you from dying, man. You know, my mom always said God works in mysterious ways. You've made me rethink everything. It'll be all right. Here, take those. Really? I mean it, Pharaoh. Don't make me hurt you. <laughs> Since we don't have a real preacher, I won't take up too much of your time. You already yeah. have. Right. 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 Now we can all take a second and listen to what Nick has to say. How about, uh, you know what? How about we sing a song or two? <laughs> I didn't bring my piano. <laughs> Mr. Dyson, would you like to hand out some sheet music? Man, I would love to. Say, so let's all sing. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all. Is really this is the best we can do? Come on. We're all going to sing right now. My grandmother says it doesn't have to be great, we just have to make a joyful noise. So we're going to make a joyful noise. Got it? Yeah, sure. Would you two gentlemen like to move up a little bit? Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Okay, let's all give it all we got. Let's give it all we got, okay? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord my God, God when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the Mr. Dyson, would you like to lead the singing part? Yeah. How great thou art. How great thou art. Men, you don't have to be so wild. I was just excited. Take it easy. Okay. Uh, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Pharaoh was right. Right about what? The Nick Pharaoh we've known for years is gone. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. The Nick Farrell that I have seen in my courtroom for half a dozen times, we will never see him again. This is plain old hogwash. You say one more thing like that about his faith, I... How many days has he served? 34, Your Honor. Then release him. I'll sign the order as soon as I get back to my office. But... He has served his 30 days for violating the restraining order? And I'm going to give him some grace for speaking to me the way he did. How great thou art. How great thou art. 
Amen. I love you, brother. Hey, you keep praying. Yeah. Congratulations, brother. You too, brother. Love you. Love you. Keep on keeping. You too, brother. You really are going to miss you. I miss you too. Miss you too. Hey. I have it for you, man. What'd you do? I don't know. I don't know why I'm being let out. I have no idea. I don't I have no idea what happened. What's the matter? Ah, uh, nothing, I guess. Well, you know I wouldn't be here a whole lot longer. I know. But I thought you'd be here at least a few more weeks, I guess. Well, I could go rob a liquor store and be back in time for supper. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, man. It's all right, man. I love you, Nick. I love you, too. You take care, brother. You know, I'm probably going to end up in that federal pen in El Reno. You think you might come by and see me? Uh, I promise. At least twice a month. I promise. I gave your wife $1,200. And her agreement was that you'd kill Farrell. Please don't put me back in there. No, please, please, man. Leave you. When I don't take my meds, I forget yes, stuff. Get please. In there. Please. I'm, I'm going to stop. Better not have spent any of that money, or I will take it out of her hide. Did you guys get all that? What did you do? Officer Banks, you are under arrest for conspiracy to commit murder. Glad you come to see me, Mr. Farrell, but nothing's changed. Well, I know you're going to be getting out soon. That's a change, and I was sort of hoping that maybe you might uh, want to make a change in your life. You want me to join your religion, right? Well, this isn't about religion, Stephen. This is about giving your life to Jesus Christ and living for Him each day. Well, maybe when my epilepsy is gone, I might, Nick. You can't hold epilepsy against Christ. He didn't give it to you. All my life, I've been told that God created us. Well, he messed up when he made me. Look, bad things happen to all kinds of people, but you can't let your disability define you. I'm just not ready, Nick. I'll let you know when. Besides, I've got some good things in the works. I'll be making a lot of money. I don't have time for church. All right. Okay, Stephen, you've got my number. If you need me for anything, you call me and I'll drop whatever I'm doing. Sure, man. Thanks. This will be our fourth Bible study concerning marriage and how the Holy Word describes the act of marriage itself. Uh, does anyone have anything else they would wish to add? Yeah, so what you said at the beginning really meant a lot to me about how our marriages should be like the uh, Christ marriage to the church. Amen, Toby. You know, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. You know, the church is the bride and Christ is the groom. Nick, this is your third Bible study with us, but this is the first time you've had anything to say. What is it, brother? I've been reading in Ephesians, Ephesians 5, and uh, praise God. Most of you know I got married. After 15 years, I got married for the third time. During those 15 years, I thought marriage wasn't for me, but I thought, Everybody was wrong. And uh, uh, the relationship you talk about with Christ and the church and the husband and the wife, uh, I, I, I realize now that I failed because I didn't have a relationship with Christ. I didn't love when I was married twice before, I, I I didn't love either wife like I was supposed to love them. 
Nick, what have we learned about not looking back? Well, yeah, so that, that's, that's really not what I'm doing. Here, this is an example of what I'm talking about. The other night we were going through the channels trying to figure out what we wanted to watch. I wanted to watch football. And that's what I was looking for. I knew there was a game on. And while we're looking, we end up on a channel that's showing synchronized women swimming. <laughs> Made my wife extremely happy. Maria was so happy. They do a lot of that in her country. And, you know, different colors and different swimsuits. And But the girls were all going in the same motion. It's the last thing in the world I wanted to watch, but it made her so happy. And when it made her happy, it made me happy that she was so thrilled. And so I never got to watch the football game, but I had reached the point that I didn't care, you know, because I wanted her to be happy. And that's when I realized I'd always thought of myself first. And 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 uh, I know that's probably a silly example, but but I've learned that the one I put first is Christ. Second is my wife. And I should always be third. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Nick. I, I really can't think of a sweeter example of the love a husband should have for the wife. That kind of self-sacrificial love that Christ had for his bride, the church. That's just beautiful. Well, this has been another great meeting and I've really enjoyed this lesson with you all. Thank you for the care, brother. Oh, hey everyone, this weekend we'll be carrying the cross uh, five miles south of town and back. Uh, uh, is anyone interested in participating in this ministry? My name's Paula Taylor. May I speak with you, sir? Of course, sure. It's about my granddaughter, um, Amanda Pitts. She's been missing for over six months now. I read about that in the paper and I'm so sorry. I saw you carrying the cross and I thought we may talk if you have time. Sure we can. Hang on a second, though. What is it, son? What's up? think Charity's been kidnapped. The police found her car. What? Oh my lord! <gasps> I'll be right there. Hold up. Hold up. Guys. Guys, no, no, no you don't understand. This is my daughter's car. That's, I right, that's my daughter's car. Hey, I, I got it for that. about hey. six months ago. Hey, I'm Detective Amber Cox and you need to step back for a minute. We are still assessing the scene right now. So why was your daughter driving out of town in this direction? My daughter was going to see Jennifer Blake. J Jennifer and my daughter, they study with each other all the time. You don't happen to have Jennifer Blake's number, do you? I do. I, uh, I have it right here. I see phone. it. I hope you don't mind, but we're asking because we need to verify why your daughter was headed this way when she was allegedly abducted. Allegedly. Does that look alleged to you? Allegedly until it's proven, Nick. Well, there's no girl with the card. No, there's not. I'm not a detective, I and I know she got pulled over. I'm dealing with you. Dad, 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 it's okay. They're, they're just doing their job. Just doing their job, that's all. And, and please, I don't care what you have to do, just please find my daughter. Please. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Uh, most of you heard that my granddaughter is missing now. My son and his wife would have been here, but their, their church is holding a prayer vigil at the exact same moment we are. I have an old friend here that he's known me since I was five years old, and Pastor Moore and his granddaughter is missing, Rhonda Moore. And I don't know much about the word. It's okay, brother. But I know it says we're two or more gathered. There, I am in the midst of them. 
and we have to hang on to that. Thank you, Nick. I can't stand up here and, and tell you that I know how the parents and, and family members of these missing girls are feeling. I have a 15 year old daughter at home myself and I, I just can't imagine what you guys are going through. I'm Paula Taylor and I'm the grandmother of Amanda Pitts. Captain Hollings, we didn't come here to come down on you or make problems for your department, but our hearts are broken and we were wondering if there was really anything else that you could do for us. I found these two sticks and I think the three of us should each say a prayer. Sometimes I wonder if God even hears our prayers. I'm willing to pray. We will move heaven and earth to find these girls, but there's only so many leads. You know, we, we think that we're looking for a brown pickup, maybe orange. It's, we've been told that the last two numbers of the license plate could be 37 or, or possibly 31. Nothing's for sure. Yes, that's, in, in addition to the, the vague description we have of the pickup, they're been told that the, the tailgate could possibly be white or, or maybe tan. I'm the aunt of Katie Barnes, and she went missing about the same week as poor Amanda. And uh, I know you officers are doing all you can, but we are just in plain torture, just in torture. It's just almost more than we can bear. Look, I'm going to try to give you a bright spot. Here it is. We haven't found a single body. You guys can make it. Glad you can make it. Thank you, sorry. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's okay, buddy. Let's just pray together tonight. Okay? Let's just concentrate on praying together. Okay. Pastor Wiley, would you like to say anything? Um, I believe that we should have some prayer and hold hands and ask the, the Father to come and help us in these times of this uh, heartache and struggle that everybody's going through. Dear Father God, we just come before you in spirit and in truth. And we just pray, Father, just come and help all these grieving families find out the truth of their loved ones. And I pray that you just bring them home safe and sound with no harm done to them. Father, please watch over us and help send the police to this horrible place. Watch over our families as this is a terrible time for them. Glad you come to see me, Nick. Hey, man, I would never turn down an opportunity to visit a good friend. So, anything new on your case? Yeah, but we can talk about that later. There's something else I want to tell you. If you need money for a good lawyer, let me know. No, nothing like that. I finally did it, Nick. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Lester, I was alone in my cell. Martin had been gone for about a week and I found some scriptures that my grandmother had highlighted for me. And I ran across your notes from a sermon that you preached about having a clean record 
when facing Jesus. I can't explain how I felt in that moment. It was just me in that cell, but I wasn't alone anymore. Lester, that's the most fantastic news I've heard in weeks. I'm so happy for you and your grandmother. That was the first time in my life that I'd ever prayed and was honest. I called my grandmother and I told her about it and she was so happy, she cried. It made me cry too. I owe you my life, Errol. That's twice now. Lester, you don't owe me anything. I'm gonna plead guilty to the distribution charges. I'm not gonna say I'm innocent when I know I'm not. I admire that. And with this being your first offense, I'm willing to bet that the judge will be lenient. Oh, buddy. What happened to your hand? I had some outpatient surgery that I should have had done two or three years ago and I just now got around to it. I'll be all right. Nick, I have to admit, I, I thought you'd be a little happier for me. Lester, you don't understand. I probably should have told you when I sat down, but my granddaughter Charity is missing. Been kidnapped, taken, we don't know. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, I probably should have said something, but I didn't feel like talking about it. Sorry. Nick, before you leave, can we pray together? Sure, I'd love that. Dear Heavenly Father, you know our hurt and needs before we do. Would you please be with Nick and his family in his time of crisis? Pardon me? Hello. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Where are you? Well, I visited with Lester, then uh, I picked up all the things you wanted. Do you remember the truck that everybody in the world is looking for? Yeah? Why? Honey, I think I'm parked right behind it. Maria, I've got to find out who this is. Nicholas, no! Let the police handle it. I'll be careful, honey, I promise. Nicholas, no! Honey, my phone is dying. I don't have a charging cord in my pickup here. Oh, I'm sorry, your charger is in my car. Maria, my phone... Maria, my phone is dying. Nicholas, no! Nicholas!
I'll be back with the cops in about 10 minutes. No. Father, please help me. Please help me. Kill me if you even think about touching me. Charity, Charity, Charity. Girls. I can't believe I found you. How many of them are there? Just one. We've only seen one person. One person? You're going to have to be really quiet so we can get out of here, okay? I'm not in any condition to tangle with anybody. Fight down anyone you can, okay? Aren't you coming with us? No, I won't leave him. Run, okay? Run! Protect my Nicholas. I love him very much, Lord. Lord God, Ama, I entrust everything to you. Protect him, push all Lord God, say um badal na dugo. Lord, wag mo push ang pababayaan, Lord. Pat mo ba mo push o Lord? Wag mo push ang pababayaan. Balutin mo push o Lord, say um badal na spirit, um badal na dugo, Lord. Salamat po, salamat po. I ask all of everything, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord. You need to get out of here right now. I mean it, you. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the girls? The hospital. They're taken care of. We won't need any rape kits. That's not what this is about. He didn't touch them. You're absolutely sure? I'm positive. He's already confessed. The girls were prisoners waiting on the guy from Bismarck, North Dakota to come down so they could be trafficked. So even if he hadn't confessed, the whole story on his phone tells it all. Amanda Pitts and Katie Barnes are in North Dakota right now. Mansfield hauled them up there six months ago, and that's why there's been no leads on the case. So 
What's the perp's name in Bismarck that has Amanda and Katie? Elroy Jackson. Let's get on the horn. Contact the authorities up in Bismarck. Have them find those girls. Once they have Jackson in custody, as soon as they're done reading him his rights, I want to start the paperwork to get him extradited back here to Oklahoma. I don't want any mistakes, Amber. I want some lawyer trying to get these two thugs off on some red tape foul up on our part. Will do. One more thing. Once they've located those girls and they're safe and secure, I want you to call the families and give them the good news. Yes. I called your wife for you, Nick. Those stitches are ruined, Nick. Don't move that arm. Are you okay? Yeah, I will be. Let's go. Farrell, can't believe I'm gonna say this, but uh, I'm impressed. He did good. Thank you. I and when you get out of the hospital tomorrow, come by the station and make a statement, all right? Sure, I will. I'll be there. You know, Farrell, never really liked you. Nobody in the apartment really did. I'll tell you, did good, Nick. Thank you. He did good. When you gave me the details, I knew I had to be here. Would you all like to follow me to her bedroom? It's cold out here. Teresa, honey? Teresa? Teresa, honey? Mr. Farrell's here to see you. Isn't that wonderful? Is he really? <laughs> you give me that other pillow, please. There you go. Thank you. I'll bring him in. Is that okay? So, honey, this is Mr. Farrell. Hi, Mr. Hi, Farrell. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Mr. Farrell, you can take this chair right here. I wanted to thank you for what you did, for helping us find my daughter. I, uh, I just happened to be at the right place. I'm glad, because my granddaughter was missing. I, I know how you feel. I was hoping that when you got here, I would be able to thank you. To tell you how much we appreciate. It's, look, you don't have to. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just glad you got her back. You'll have to forgive me. I've never been around anybody that knew they were going to. When my father died, I was nine years old. He had a heart attack. We didn't know, though, it was coming. This is, this is different. Can I tell you something? Sure, you can tell me anything. I was already sick when Amanda vanished. And my whole world came crashing down around me. And I was so ashamed. Depressed.
pray to ask God for help. Why? Because I have never prayed for anything in my entire life. And I would be such a hypocrite if I was to ask God for help now to help find my daughter. Now, I don't know how to thank him either. You don't, you don't have to be ashamed. He's more understanding than you can ever imagine. His grace is without limits and his love cannot be measured. Would you, uh, would you like to thank him? Yes. Would you like to? Would you like to give the remainder of your life to him? You don't think it's too late for me? It's not too late. If you like, I'd be willing to pray with you. You see, people in prison or people in jail aren't the only ones that need their records expunged. We all have a record for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. But it's through his blood, everything can be wiped away. Can we pray together? Sure, absolutely. Would you like to pray? Yes. Jesus, please forgive me for all the times I've ignored you. Forgive me for ignoring my mother. I'm so sorry. Did you come into my heart? Be with me. Amen. You see, and he did. He came into your heart because you asked him. So it'll be okay now. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. No matter what happens, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I just want to make it to Thanksgiving. That's only a couple of weeks away. And I'll be praying for you, okay? And I'll come see you again, too. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. The damage to my hand that took place during the fight required some more surgery. But Ronnie always made sure we had plenty to eat. God works in mysterious ways. Ronnie and Val are now two of our closest friends. I went back to visit Teresa a couple of days later and told her how I'd been baptized after I accepted Christ. She put on some old clothes and I baptized her in her bathtub. She was so happy. A week later, Teresa took a nap and never woke up. She didn't make it to Thanksgiving, but after meeting her Savior, she had a celebration that we can only dream about. Just as he told me he would, Lester pleaded guilty to the drug charges and received a year in jail. I go to see him on a weekly basis and we get to study the word and pray together. He preaches every chance he can in the break room. Because of his cooperation with the police, Alvin Dyson's sentence was reduced from 15 years to 10 years, with the last five years being suspended. I helped his wife get a job at my old tire store as a receptionist, and they're all doing well. Stephen Lane got arrested again. This time, bail was set so high that he can't make it. I'll go see him soon, and maybe I'll convince him to make a change in his life, and that he can't blame everything on his disability. 
It's been a couple of months now and everything has quieted down and all the excitement is gone. Since I've given my life to Christ, I've always said that I'll talk to anybody about him and what he did for me, for us, and what he did for the world. Some people listen to me, some are willing to change their lives, while others don't want to hear me out. But I will never quit. I've wasted enough of my life, and my life is his now, and I'll give him all I can until my final breath. This is why I've come to you a second time. You cannot let your disability define you. You are loved. He does care for you. Jesus didn't just die for those that loved him. He died for those that didn't care about him. When I was a boy, my mother used to read John 3, 16 to me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are, Everything in your past can be erased and eliminated. Just give your sin, your guilt, and your shame. Put it at the foot of the cross. Give it to Jesus Christ. He'll, in, in the span of a second, he'll cover you with his blood and fill you with his spirit. If you give your heart to Christ, just put your hand up to mine, and I will pray with you. I will pray for you. And no matter what you've done wrong in your entire life, if you give your life to Christ, everything now and forever will be expunged.
King Christ. 